Hey everyone, welcome back. I've been gone for a while, I apologize. So it's June 2020 and I've had some requests for a garden tour. So let me show you my backyard. So um, we have five or six, we have five new garden beds or newer garden beds in production and we've painted them all different colors so I can refer to you, by, uh, refer to them by color when we're talking. Um, this first garden bed here, the green bed, I've got some lettuce in it and that's the romaine lettuce and I've got some four season lettuce next to it. Now things look a little bit wet because I just watered um, before this or at least some of the plants will. This is my tomatillo plant. Uh, this is the first year I'm doing tomatillos. I always like to try to do something new um, every year. So tomatillo plants are supposed to be very uh, productive and I thought I'd teach myself how to make some salsa verde so we'll do a we'll do a video on that later in the season so I've got two uh, two tomatillo plants here right next to each other and then pretty close by I've got these ground cherries if you're not familiar with them uh, you know regular cherries grow in trees but these are ground cherries see how they're yellow up here in the corner I'm putting a picture they've got this husk on them um, so we'll see how those do. And then there's this volunteer potato from last year. <laughs> this is our regular bed of potatoes in the orange bed. These are our Yukon gold potatoes. And in the corner, you'll see of every bed, we've got a two inch uh, PVC pipe because we have reservoirs that collect water under all of our beds. So we can uh, harvest the rainwater and we can bottom water with a hose when it's necessary. You do want to top water your soil from time to time because the minerals and nutrients can only be absorbed by the plant when they're in solution, which requires moisture and water. So um, don't let your soil get too dry on top. Here's an, another plant that I'm trying new for the first time. This is an Aurora pepper. I'm kind of a sucker for colorful things. So I don't know why I did this because those Aurora peppers are supposed to be hot. These are miniature... Uh, red bell peppers and they have flowered but have not produced fruit yet so uh, you'll check back on those in a while. Planted this basil uh, maybe last week and you can see it's it's been nibbled on which is why I've got the chicken wire cage over it. <laughs> so uh, they need to get a little bit more established and then they'll get going. Uh, at the other end of the cage I've got this parsley I'm a big parsley eater. We love parsley, so I've got three healthy parsley plants coming on in, uh, which I'll be using for chimichurri sauce and a variety of other favorite recipes. So you're seeing these big garlic plants all over the place. Uh, we grow a lot of garlic. It's good for the garden because it deters pests, but it's also good for cooking all year round. This is the music variety. Uh, here we have carrot seedlings and <laughs> They look a little sad at the moment. Again, it's just because I had recently watered. I probably should have done this video before watering instead of after. These are my fennel plants. And this one, you can see a rabbit got into. They really like to eat the, these fennel plants. And here's some onions and back into potatoes. Now in this yellow bed, this is not Yukon gold potatoes. These are red skin potatoes. Uh, my husband is a big uh, meat and potatoes guy. And so we grow all our own potatoes. So you can get a sense of the scope of the garden here. All the beds are four feet wide and they're approximately 30 feet long. So to give you some sense of scale. The garlic's gonna be ready in a few weeks. And so I'll do another video when it's time to harvest. Here you can see the trellising system I used. Uh, we used electrical uh, junction boxes to connect conduit. There is no electrical wire going through the conduit. It's just a frame for this natural jute fiber, which I use to string up a trellis. And that way I have a place for the cucumbers and tomatoes and whatever other climbing vegetables I'm doing. Uh, they, need a, they need something to climb. So uh, that's what we put together for them. So we've got uh, cucumbers here at the end and then a variety of tomatoes. And usually I come through here once the tomatoes are really growing and uh, I don't have to do any pruning today because I just did it the other day. I pinched off the suckers. If you're not aware of that, we can do a video on that later. Uh, but here I'm just making sure that everything is properly aligned with the trellis 
so flowers don't get damaged and uh, the plants have adequate support. I'm doing four different kinds of tomatoes this year. We've got uh, some brandy wine, some black crim, some paste tomatoes from Italy known as inciardi, and some uh, cherry tomatoes. Here's some lettuce. I cut that lettuce last week, so it's growing back in. And, uh, whoops, sorry to make you dizzy. Uh, back to the tomatoes. Uh, once these start to fruit, it'll be e easier for you to see what, what's going on. Uh, this is our 4x4 four four bed. This is the first bed that I ever built to grow food in. And this year I'm doing Ukrainian carrots in here. They're supposed to be very large, so we'll see. You can tell that I started them before the little ones in the other bed. This is some arugula. I do arugula in about three to four weeks of sessions because it will bolt um, and go to seed. So if you want to have arugula throughout the growing season, you need to keep planting it. There's some cilantro next to the lettuce. And see those white flowers there? Um, oh, that's the lettuce up close. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not a great camera person here, guys. So I'll be harvesting this lettuce to eat over the next few days. And then I'll pull it out and replant more lettuce. So um, arugula, cilantro, these are things you want to succession plant all summer. Here's some more basil. I usually space it throughout the garden. Um, this is a bed which has the misfortune of running into a bindweed problem. And the only way to get rid of bindweed is to smother it, which is why I have black plastic over the growing area to uh, make it impossible for the bindweed to grow. It's very aggressive. This is my second year covering the bed with plastic to try to eliminate the problem. You see we've got more tomatillos and ground cherries here. Checking out the ground cherries to show you where they're hiding. Um, they should fruit all season long and I'm told they, they make a great preserve, so we'll see. Um, if you don't have a big garden space, you can do basil and lots of other herbs in containers. Uh, here's another succession of cilantro. It's just starting to come up. Um, so I've got some mature cilantro and I've got just budding cilantro. And then this is dill. We'll be eating dill all summer long. Uh, it'll go with our cucumbers. Over, This is the overhead view of the garden. I'm up on the deck now to get a little bit of vantage point, higher vantage point. Uh, please don't mind the white uh, ropes. That's my clothesline. And you can see all the different beds here. I'm using those chicken wire cages to protect anything that's tender or likely to be eaten by rabbits. And uh, we're off to a start for the summer. So thank you for watching and thank you for your support. I'll be back with you as soon as possible. Thanks, guys. Bye.